the uh, New York and DC study tour runs uh, in April, and we will be uh, visiting both New York and Washington, uh, DC. These tours basically have two uh, distinct phases. Uh, the first one is in New York, which focuses on the United Nations. Uh, so there we have various US, UN agencies come to visit us where they uh, they speak about their, their particular areas. So we will have someone from the Security Council, someone from um, the General Assembly, um, someone uh, who's dealing with sustainable development goals. The second phase of the um, trip is in Washington, D.C. And there we visit the State Department and think tanks uh, that operate uh, in Washington. So these are, if you like, foreign policy um, and diplomacy implementers in the State Department and influencers in uh, in think tanks. And so there's um, quite a good sort of juxtaposition between the two sort of um, <clears throat> types of diplomatic actor um, that we're going to go and visit. Uh, so what does the tour include? So we'll spend um, six nights in the United States. Everybody should arrive on the Sunday uh, where we have our first team meeting um, because we're in um, in the UN first thing on on the Monday morning. Uh, we have we start with the tour of the building, uh, including the General Assembly and the Security Council room, and then uh, we go on to our presenters. So it'll be quite intense uh, two days there at the UN. And then on the Wednesday, uh, you have a morning free, and then the early afternoon we travel to Washington. And in Washington, uh, we visit uh, across the across the two days, um, <clears throat> the State Department and a wide spectrum of think tanks, including the Cato Institute, uh, the Hoover Institute, uh, the United States Institute for Peace, and uh, the United States State Department. So that's quite a broad view of different sort of uh, policy makers and policy influencers, um, views on how <clears throat> diplomacy, international relations, US foreign policy um, should work. We also go to uh, the Capitol building where we, um, we have a tour there. And usually a member of uh, the United States legislature can um, also come and speak to us about some sort of more, you know, those interested in more sort of domestic foreign policy uh, influences. So the last year at the UN, uh, we heard from a um, wide ver uh, variety of speakers covering sort of if you like um, high politics in sort of the areas of foreign and security policy, treaties, um, role of the General Assembly. Um, peacekeeping operations, sort of uh, how the UN gets involved in those. But we also had uh, people from the more sort of economics e sort of sides of the tour, um, looking at um, sustainable development goals, um, the World Trade Organization, uh, the World Bank, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So quite a variety of different talks at uh, in that building. That will concentrate the first two days. In DC, <laughs> visiting the State Department, we speak to um, section um, experts, basically, in their in their field. Um, so last year, we had quite an interesting discussion of US trade policy um, with their economics team, who deals with how the United States uh, negotiates sort of trade agreements, um, how it deals with, um, so specifically the moment, at uh, the time, how it's dealing with China, and uh, increased tariffs um, and how you apply those. And these are practicing um, diplomats who, who will who work in various areas of US diplomacy, <clears throat> many of whom have been abroad and come back in the, in the sort of cycle of a foreign policy, um, foreign service officer. Um, they're also quite good at answering questions for those of you who want to enter sort of foreign services about the sort of what the life is like in various, you know, particularly in the State Department. We also visit sort of uh, non, they are, they are governmental institutions funded by the government, but they are um, not implements of the US government. So they're independent government funded um, organizations, it's like the United States Institute of Peace, which is mandated by Congress. Uh, it's funded by Congress, but it's non, um, it's not a government agency, effectively. It's, it's a, it's non-governmental <clears throat> think tank, effectively, which advises the US government on peacekeeping, um, how to promote peace in certain areas of the world. Uh, last year, we had a particular uh, focus on Afghanistan and in South Asia. Uh, so for those of you on our South Asia degree, that will probably be quite interesting to you. Um, this is very different to sort of the sort of active policy think tanks, which have sort of uh, political leanings, um, where 
as the United States Institute of Peace is uh, bipartisan. Many of the think tanks we go to in uh, Washington are obviously partisan and they influence, uh, try to influence foreign policy. So I think this tour is really a unique opportunity to engage in two very distinct diplomatic environments, one which is effectively uh, an international organization with a very sort of civil service implementation sort of focus, whereas the other is a, is a very political, Washington's a very political animal and see the politics and the politics of international relations. Okay, well, I think I'm um, going to hand over to Ola now. Um, and he can speak to you about the tour uh, to uh, Alice. Thanks very much for listening. Right. So, um, usually around April, we organize a study tour to Addis Ababa. And so um, next year, the study tour is going to take place from Sunday, the 5th of April to Friday, the 10th of April. Um, so it's a five day long study tour. Um, so what I'll be doing is giving you an overview of um, what to expect from the study tour, as well as a few bits of information about accommodation travel um, and other activities um, that I would engage in outside the formal activities during the study tour. Okay, so um, the reason we choose Addis Ababa is because it is home to a number of international organizations um, that operate in Africa, um, such as the African Union, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, um, the European Union External Action Service, um, also the Ethiopian Foreign Ministry, um, and other th think tanks such as the CDRC, which is the Center for Dialogue, Research, and Cooperation. And so Addis Ababa, um, as opposed to many other African cities, has a, an unusually high concentration of these sorts of um, organizations and so afford you the opportunity to make the most of your five days um, there. And so the study tour is co-led by CISD, the Center of International Studies and Diplomacy, and the Royal African Society, um, which is led by Dr. Nick Westcott. Um, Nick Westcott will be with us throughout the tour um, as he has had quite extensive experience in Addis. And so I think there's no better guide than Nick Westcott for this sort of tour. Okay, so in terms of accommodation, and I'll talk about travel arrangements shortly, um, we'll be staying at the Hilton Hotel in Addis Ababa, and the hotel is quite central to most of the organizations in Addis, so everywhere seems to be about a 10 to 20 minute drive from the hotel, and so accessibility is maximized when we stay at the Hilton Hotel. Um, each participant would have their own room, usually a double room, um, and breakfast is included um, with accommodation costs. Um, we usually have lunch and dinner outside the hotel, but that is also um, covered um, by the study tour. Okay, and so essentially what the tour includes as I've said earlier, is five nights stay at the Hilton, um, all meals while in this. Also, all internal transport is taken care of. Um, so we usually have uh, a tour bus, essentially, um, that caters to all our essential travel needs. Um, if you perhaps want to pop into the local market or want to um, do some individual sightseeing, that wouldn't be necessarily covered by the study tour, but all group travel um, and essential travel is covered. We usually also have a public lecture um, during the study tour um, organized by CISD and also um, the Scrap Weapons Project. And so you have the opportunity to assist in organizing this event um, and also um, in terms of networking with the guests that come to this event. In terms of the international organizations that we'll be visiting, um, you have extensive opportunities to network with 
um, the individuals that would be seen in these organizations. Um, so for example, in the African Union, we usually have an entire day in the African Union, um, which begins with a tour of the facilities of the building and the conference rooms. And then we have uh, briefing sessions with the African Union Leadership Academy. And then we usually um, engage in discussions with uh, some of the commissioners. And so last year we engaged with um, the Commissioner for Trade, Ambassador um, Muchembe, and we were able to gain a lot of insight into the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which was the hot topic um, at the time. And the same goes for the other organizations we visit, such as the European External Action Service um, and UNECA, um, which I'll talk about in more detail soon. So the African Union, um, as I said earlier, we have a private briefing with um, commissioners that are available at the time. We also have extensive briefings with the African Union Leadership Academy. And you get a good overview of what the African Union does um, in terms of its different um, executive organs, such as those in trade and industry, political affairs, economic affairs, the Office of the Secretary General, and the Leadership Academy. Um, the African Union also provides lunch and tea breaks um, during the tour, um, so it's an all-inclusive package for the day. Up next, we have the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. And um, the visit to UNECA um, usually sees us covering topics such as regional integration, governance, climate change, nat natural resource management, etc. And in this particular package, we also have access to some of the senior officials um, that run UNECA. And so last year we had a private briefing with the United Nations um, Secretary General, um, his special representative, which was Hannah Tete, to the African Union. And um, she gave us a lot of valuable insight um, with regards to the nature of the relationship between the United Nations um, and the African Union and also other relevant international organizations um, that work in Africa. Um, interestingly, we also had Hannah Tete um, attend our public lecture as a special guest, and so there was additional opportunity um, to network with her after the UNEC study tour day. The EU External Action Service um, is also one of the major international organizations that um, operates in Addis. And last year, we were very fortunate to meet a number of senior officials um, that work in the EAS. And so we had a briefing session, an extensive briefing session with them, followed by a drinks reception. And this was hosted by um, Ranieri Sabatucci, who is the EU ambassador to the African Union and the director of the External Action Service. And there were also a number of um, senior diplomats um, available for students to network with. Um, it was rather interesting that we had a one-to-one -one student ratio um, for um, these diplomats. And so students got a lot of time to really engage with, with each of these diplomats and ask about their work and also introduce themselves, discuss future um, prospects, usually future employment prospects. Um, so um, overall, the tour gives you um, ample opportunity to um, network with these important people. We also had a visit to the Ethiopian Foreign Ministry. Um, at the Foreign Ministry, we had a private briefing with the Foreign Minister at the time, um, Hirid Semene. Um, we talked about Ethiopia's peacekeeping operations in Somalia, um, recent discussions with the rich year, and um, interest while we, are, we were at the Foreign Ministry, um, Significant political um, uh, events happened in Sudan, and we sort of had a bird's eye or first hand view as to how crisis management um, looks like in real time. And so we got a lot of insight and a lot of information about what was going on in Sudan at the time. And so um, that just 
shows how dynamic the study tours can be and how much access you will be granted um, during the study tour. Um, so we uploaded a map of um, key tour locations um, so that you can uh, check them out at your spare time. Um, and what you can see from the map is that everything is within a stone throws distance. And so it is um, a rather convenient study tour um, where we can get everything done in five days. Um, so before I conclude, I'm just going to go over um, the relevant information that, that um, isn't perhaps covered in the slide. And so in terms of the travel arrangements, for example, you would notice that it starts on a Sunday and officially ends on a Friday. Um, however, because of individual concerns and individual travel availabilities, um, feel free to speak to Fadil early enough um, in case you need to modify your travel um, your arrival or departure date. However, um, costs um, for accommodation after the 10th of April, which is the Friday, will have to be covered by students that want to stay in Addis for a longer period of time. Um, in terms of visas, um, Ethiopia operates the visa on arrival scheme, um, but we also usually have a list of the um, members of the study tour. And so once we get to the airport, um, you usually find your name on this list and you shall be granted the visa on arrival. The cost for the visa is usually included in the study tour. Um, so that's also an additional um, perk of participating in this tour with us. Um, I believe there's a lot more information in terms of um, the general administration of the study tour that Fadil can perhaps um, speak to when you guys ask your questions. And so if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat section and myself or Fadil would endeavor to answer these. Thank you.